Hi, Jesse. How are you? Hi, good. How are you doing? I'm very well. So I loved the show. I thought you were so brilliant on it. Such an immersive performance. Um, but for those that don't know, tell them a little about Queer as Folk and a little about Ruthie, your character. Uh, Queer as Folk. Um, this is a reimagining of the iconic 1999 British series by Russell T. Davies. It is super fun, really vibrant, set in New Orleans. And it is sexy beyond compare and um, is a really authentically queer story. Um, my character Ruthie is the hottest English lit teacher in Louisiana yes. and uh, she's a messy bitch and I adore her very much. Um, I think where she ends and I begin the lines have started to blur and I um, yeah we find her trying to become an adult and uh, low-key struggling. Yes. Which yes. like has the same who isn't? Right, right. I feel yeah. like all the characters are so relatable, right? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely, what I love about the show is I'm a fan of the show. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I'm in it. That's me. Um, so it's, I definitely, I've fallen in love with all the characters. And I think, I think people will definitely find themselves in little pieces of everyone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's go back to the very beginning. Tell me about the audition process for Ruthie. Did you have to do uh, chemistry reads? So it was actually like really quick for me. Um, I had a really tight deadline. Um, I was about to sign on to do uh, quite a few more years of Big Sky. Um, and this came along and it was just a perfect fit. And I basically booked it the next day and had a, had a tough decision to make. And um, ultimately it was, you know, Ruthie has a line in the, in the first episode that's like, hey, you could be trans and toxic. It's called intersectionality, bitch. And it was that, um, that spirit of allowing this really nuanced, um, funny, sarcastic kind of a bitch, uh, trans woman to be messy and be human. And it was that, it was that, it was that the way queerness was coming through in every single way um, through the script that I was like, I think this is this is home, and I was right. So, had you known any of the cast beforehand? Um, I've known I've known of some of them. I hadn't mm -hmm. known them personally, but like I knew, uh, obviously, of like Kim Cattrall and Juliette Lewis. But like I knew right. Johnny Johnny Sibley from social media. I and I loved his work on Pose. He was so good and. Yes. Um, Ryan's show special on Netflix. He's an icon, a legend, the moment. Yes. Uh, and it's it's cool. I've really I've gotten to fall in love with them. It's been it's been a real joy. Mm -hmm. And I love the moments that Ryan wrote for Ruthie in episode four and episode seven too. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan yeah, a good writer, and I love him. Like, um, his a lot of a lot of Ruthie's like biting sarcastic jokes throughout. Um, are so Ryan. You can like hear Ryan's voice in all of them. <laughs> so I have so many favorite Ruthie moments. I have like a long list here, but I'm not going to say my favorite moments. Uh, well, I'm, Tell I'm me curious. About your... curious. Two. What are your two favorites? Two favorites. Oh my gosh. Um... Or one. <laughs> Such a long <laughs> list. Um, and I'm not allowed to talk about two of them. Um, oh yeah. There's... Wait. Are we? Are we? Well, I was going to talk about it because I'm going to put this out post-launch because there's okay. so many moments like in the last episode and then episode six that I want to talk about <laughs> that are amazing. My favorite things. <laughs> the ending. Oh my God, the ending. <laughs> I was not expecting that, let me tell you. But I feel like if you, if you watch. Yeah, the clues were there. The yeah. clues were all there. I've rewatched the show multiple times and I'm like, people are going to know. And it's, I love, I love. Um, hearing that people were surprised. I was, I was. <laughs> and then knowing what the audience knows about Char, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. what's gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, it's, so, um, we love the drama. Yeah, yeah. It's messy, but it's real. It's messy, but it's real. And it's not, yeah. it doesn't feel um, gratuitously messy. Like messy feels like such like a, um, just like a, a simple yeah. way way to talk about it because it's they're they're real it's like these are people going through things they're coping you know they're they're allowed they're failing 
they're trying and etc cetera, etc cetera. and through that is a lot of mess just like real life yeah. i don't know anyone queer or not who's not a big ball of mess yeah yeah um so yeah i'm still trying to think about my favorite ruthie moment i think one of them is when um she's with all the beer bottles and then Shar has just come back home and she talks about she's going to be there um for the family now and it's just so beautifully delivered Thanks. And then, of course, episode six, uh, when um, Brody presents the dress, and it's like, it's an ugly dress, but it's just such a beautiful moment. It speaks so much about the characters and the journey uh, that they've been on individually and together. Yeah, and I, what I love about that, that dress moment, two and six, is Ruthie's humor still comes through, even though she's definitely clearly found herself after high school. Yeah. Um, she still feels like the same person. And I love that. And I think, um, I don't know. I know when I've, I've told some people about what I get to do in six and I was so excited that I got to do it. And people were nervous because, you know, I think we're used to seeing transition narratives told from this straight cis point of view um, that normally that scene of like showing the dress would be like, oh, like, like, wow, like finally. And, and it, it, it's just, it's done differently because yeah. it's real. And, and that episode was written by a trans woman and uh, Jacqueline Moore, one of our showrunners. And yeah. um, it, it, it speaks to me. It speaks to my lived experience. It speaks to, you know, I called my ex-boyfriend from high school and I was like, you're never gonna believe. Um, I feel like I'm having conversations we had on TV. And it's, um, I had no input in the story in that episode. I, I didn't like have any, have a hand in the writing. It's just, I think there are going to be a lot of people who may not have seen themselves reflected in this way before on TV, but who, who can really relate to it. Cause I know I can. Yeah. So I want to hear your favorite Ruthie moments. Um, my favorite Ruthie moments, honestly, I do. Okay. The, my favorite scene to do, my favorite scene to watch, my favorite scene of just the show is the finale. Yes. Um, and I know it's going to be divisive and I love that too. I know people are going to have opinions on it, um, yes. which I say, fuck, fuck yeah, I hope you have opinions. Um, it's real. That, that's my, okay, so that's, that's my favorite, but also yes. just like Ruthie on her own. Um, probably maybe in the pilot, um, when she's, she's nervous as hell, the nurse gives her, um, this baby and she's like a fish out of water. And she's like, we a happy, a healthy boy and girl. And, um, I have a line that's like, well, we don't know that yet. Yeah. And, yeah. um, it's just such a, it's so Ruthie. But also, yeah. ep honestly, episode six was a fever dream. It was like, one of the greatest filming experiences I've ever had. Wow. wow, amazing. So as a viewer, what are some of your favorite moments from the show? Now that you've seen it, you said twice, how many times have you um, seen it? I've seen it so many times. I, <laughs> I've seen it's it a so lot. It's so good um, though. It is so good, it's so good. Um, as a viewer, I think um, episode four is just breathtaking um Ryan O'Connell he really did it with with the script um and his performance is fantastic and Eric Grace uh knocks it out of the park as Marvin and I yeah. hope I hope he gets showered with all the praise and love and opportunities he deserves um I think I think episode that part of episode four and just that episode are my favorites um but also all the moments I get to share with Brody uh, Devin Way on the show yeah um he he quickly became one of my very best friends in real life so getting to play best friends is so special and like you could see you could see our like chemistry on on screen and and it it shows because it's real it's just us yeah. getting to um be friends yeah and what was it like working with cg me and cg it's like a magic amount of chemistry like it, and truly i i a profound level of trust mm -hmm. you know we we don't we st still really don't know each other all that well um we've only known each other for a little bit and pretty soon after we 
had to, after, pretty soon after we met, we had to do some pretty intimate things together. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a moment where either of us felt uncomfortable or that we couldn't trust the other person or we couldn't communicate how we were feeling. There were times on set, um, CG brought it up recently. Um, we were talking about feeling comfortable in the space we occupy. And I said something to them where I was like, you know, you're allowed to feel comfortable, right? And they, I didn't even, I didn't really remember that until they brought it up. They were like, that was such a, a profound moment for them. Because I feel like as queer people, we often are um, expected to be okay with feeling uncomfortable in spaces. You know, when we are the only person in the room, when we are consistently trying to speak up for ourselves and our communities and et cetera, et cetera. So being in a space where I could just be myself and CG could just be themselves and we could just be these people was uh, so freeing. And I think we found a lot of beauty in the moments we just got to be together. It was really fun. It's amazing. And the complete opposite, the character of Brenda is a lot. I think we can all agree, Brenda's a lot. We all, she's we trying all love though. Brenda. Yeah, she's trying. Um, but what was it like working with Kim Cattrall? Um, what a sweet, kind person. Yeah, she, she walked in smile first um, and just really, she, you know, she has this big name. She has a gorgeous resume and a wealth of experience. Um, and she brought her, her personhood to set, not her, her legacy. And it was um, beautiful. I loved working with her. I, I, yeah, I hope Ruthie and Brenda get to do a lot, a lot more together. Mm -hmm. we'll, so see. Think... We'll, we'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as, a, as like a non-spoiler, we'll see. Right, right. <laughs> so there was the global premiere, the New York premiere. I think you got to bring your family to one of the premieres. What I was did. that like? Okay, well, I mean, sitting next to my dad uh, <laughs> during the beginning of episode two with like a 30 foot me with like a giant dildo in my ass was uh, a moment I won't soon forget. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was... Um, it was so special. You know, I think as I, so many queer people have tumultuous relationships with their families and it's, um, I often get asked like, what does pride mean to me? Or what does family mean to me? What does chosen family mean to me? Loaded questions. And I've attached to a lot of reflecting since the LA premiere, when I, I flew my family out, they stayed for the weekend. They low-key had a terrible time in California, but it was really fun. They had a fun time at the event. Um, <laughs> and I was like, for the, the first weekend of Pride, I got to celebrate with my family. And not just like out and about doing whatever. I got to celebrate at my premiere of Queer as Folk, where they're watching me be explicitly queer. They're watching me be unapologetically trans. Um, and you know, I, I gave them hefty warnings about when they <laughs> should, should not close their eyes. Um, and it, it was so, it was so special getting to share, share my queer joy with my family who really doesn't always get it. Yeah. So I don't want to talk about the cliffhanger. I don't want to spoil it for too many people, but what are your hopes for Ruthie going forward? Um, I think Ruthie has a lot of, I try not to spoil it myself. <laughs> um, she's got um, really endless possibilities for what her life can look like. And I'm excited to see her explore all of those possibilities. Um, I don't think she's, she was quite ready to be a parent in the beginning of the show. And she's finally starting to get there. Yeah. But there's things about the life she wants that she's just not ready for. And she actually actively like rejects. Um, so I'm excited to, for her to find where the hell she fits into it all. You know, she, she isn't this wholesome, sweet, stay at home mom. 
Right. But also maybe it's time she isn't the opposite either. And um, I'm excited for her to find a middle ground where she gets to be authentically her uh, with people she feels the most seen with. And um, I'll leave it at that. So what do you, I'm got, curious yes what you think where you want Ruthie to go in terms of in terms of you know exactly what I'm talking about yes yes um <laughs> see, <laughs> see on the one hand I do think that maybe not now but in the future there will be the babies will still see her as their mama and that there still is a family there and what does that family look like yeah may not be that, what originally we thought it would look like that's that's where my brain goes yeah okay. but who knows we'll see is there gonna R be a season two do you know i mean mr peacock hello <laughs> Come on, come um, on. I, I hope so. I think we have a lot of, I think we have a really rich opportunity to tell stories that haven't been told. Yeah. And um, I think we do that in the first season. And I think mm -hmm. a second season would just lend itself to more. You know, there's no way one show could ever, can ever encapsulate the entirety of experiences within the LGBTQIA plus community, but we could sure damn try. And um, there's definitely more stories that need to be told. And um, I adore Stephen Dunn and Jacqueline Moore and the whole the whole team and the way the way they do storytelling, the way they tackle these people. Um, so I I hope we get I hope we are in New Orleans for a long time. Yes. Yeah. What was it like filming there? Oh, I mean, I can't wait to go back. I I feel like I lost a part of myself when I left. I I truly. The way I love New Orleans is like no other city. I'm from New York. I love New York. I will always, it will always feel like home. But I found pieces of myself in New Orleans that I, I didn't know I needed to find. And I think part of that was this queer little bubble that we found ourselves in. It gave us the opportunity just like to grow uninhibited. But New Orleans has this beautiful spirit of rebuilding. You know, um, I think it was Ryan who said it. He was like, he said he has so much magic and just as much tragic or whatever the hell he said in his Ryan way. And, <laughs> but it's so true. You know, the, the city needs to rebuild every year from hurricanes and flooding. Um, a tornado swept through part of the city right as we were leaving. Um, oh. There's COVID decimated so many of the businesses there. And it's, um, but yet there are festivals every week. There's parties all the time. And it feels very much like the spirit of the show. Something horrific and earth shattering community. It, it, it shattered at this community happens in, in the pilot. Yeah. But the show's about the rebuilding and it feels very much just like the spirit of New Orleans. And um, there's, there's this spirit of, you can't help but grow when the city around you is doing the same. Yeah, yeah it was, I love it. Wow, I love New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's so beautifully put too. So I can now say you're going to be on Star Trek Strange New Worlds next week. Live long and prosper. Yes, I, good God, I'm so happy I could finally talk about it. <laughs> yeah, because you filmed it, what, last year? Over a year ago. Oh my God. Yeah, over, I was, yeah, I was done, I think a year ago. Wow. <laughs> and I feel like I feel like a new person too. I went literally. I went from set of Big Sky, basically to set of Star Trek. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow. So, what was the experience like filming in? What was it like working with Sydney Freeland? Uh, yeah, Sydney Freeland, my good Judy. She is. Um, we. Be, I feel like we became really good friends, and um, that was the first time. That was my introduction. That was like such a. a a great warm up to get to Queer as Folk. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I worked with someone on a on like a large project who like like we we just got each other. I I had never worked with a trans woman in that capacity before, and um, she's a brilliant director. 
and the script is fantastic and the Star Trek family is I truly have to pinch myself that I'm even part of it but to play the, this part specifically I am overjoyed and I felt so loved and welcomed and the the way everyone on that show loves to be there it it it, it is such a gorgeous set to walk through physically like the set is beautiful but just the energy and the vibrant the vibrant uh nerd love of star trek that radiates through that set was just magnificent and the cast treated me like family and um i can't wait for that to come out a week literally just one calendar week after queer spoke so it's yeah yeah, yeah. that's a lot <laughs> yeah it's amazing so what has been like the fan reaction on social media? I know you get so much love, so much support. What has that meant to you? And tell me about that a little bit. For Queer Spoke, for Star Trek, or kind of for all of- For about? everything, yeah, all of your work over the years. You know, yeah. um, I'm gonna be brutally honest. Yeah. I'm mixed, you know, I, um, Star Trek, I am a, a little overwhelmed with the love I'm <laughs> receiving. Um, and when my, my casting for Queer Folk first came out, it was also just like, whew, like, wow, I feel so, I feel so loved. Um, I'm also, I'm not like this huge household name or, or anything. And it's, it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm exhausted and I'm, it's the type of exhaustion I've always dreamed of. And it's, uh, it's so fun. Um, I, and I love what I get to do. Um, but you know, there's also, um, I'm a trans woman in America in 2022. Um, even though I'm white and skinny and relatively pretty and uh, have a certain income and this and that, it's um, I'm still trans and I'm still a, a woman. And uh, that is, it's nothing I'm not incredibly proud of, yeah. but I'm consistently reminded of that and sometimes in very hateful ways. Um, I love a delete my block on social media, um, <laughs> like, don't try me, bitch, I'll block you. Um, and, um, but it's, there's been some surprising, you know, uh, surprising uh, legacy fans of, I would say, uh, both those projects who are like, you know, uh, see my involvement as unnecessary. Um, and there's, there's some, you know, I love gay men at home with gay men. Um, and there's definitely some gay men who uh, don't, are very misogynistic or are very transphobic. Um, I know the love will far outshine any hate, but um, I'm constantly reminded of the strides we still need to find with, within the LGBT community. It truly, we all, we put, we put these communities, and I'm saying communities, plural, LGBT into like one lump thing. And it's, it's, it's not, there is, there are differences in lived experience and people, um, I think sometimes people see my involvement in a project as checking a box um, where I'm like, oh, or, you know, maybe I have stories worthy of being told too. Right. Um, and uh, I hope people fall in love with Ruthie. I hope people fall in love with Dr. Aspen. I have, and um, I'm so proud of everything happening. Yeah, Peacock and Paramount Plus saying trans rights and we love. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what have you been watching lately that you've been really into? Um, actually, I've been watching Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Um, mm -hmm. And I just started uh, Angeline on Peacock. All right. Um, yeah, and it's so fun, it's so easy, it's, the world is too heavy. I, I used to only watch like really gritty, painful dramas and I just don't have the bandwidth anymore. Yeah. I'm like, give me Angeline. Yes. 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 Well, thank you so, so much for the art that you bring into the world, Jesse. I really, really Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. I can't wait for everyone to see you on Queer as Folk and Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Thank you very much. It was lovely meeting you. <laughs>